a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One night, while Paul was in Corinth, the Lord said to him in a vision, Do not be afraid. Go on speaking and do not be silent, for I am with you. No one will attack and harm you, for I have many people in this city. He settled there for a year and a half and taught the word of God among them. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews rose up together against Paul and brought him to the tribunal, saying, This man is inducing people to worship God contrary to the law. When Paul was about to reply, Gallio spoke to the Jews, If it were a matter of some crime or malicious fraud, I should with reason hear the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a question of arguments over doctrine and titles and your own law, see to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them away from the tribunal. They all seized Sosthenes, the synagogue official, and beat him in full view of the tribunal. But none of this was of concern to Gallio. Paul remained for quite some time, and after saying farewell to the brothers, he sailed for Syria, together with Priscilla and Aquila. At Sencre, he had shaved his head, because he had taken a vow. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God is king of all the earth. God is king of all the earth. All you peoples, clap your hands. Shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord the Most High, the Awesome, is the great king over all the earth. God is king of all the earth. He brings people under us, nations under our feet. He chooses for us our inheritance, the glory of Jacob, whom he loves. God is king of all the earth. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our king, sing praise. God is king of all the earth. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she is in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy that a child has been born into the world. So you also are now in anguish. But I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. On that day, you will not question me about anything. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus returns to us in the resurrection, in his gift of the Spirit, which is his abiding presence. He returns to us at the end of time. We will see him face to face. One of the dynamics of life and one of the great joys of heaven are pointed out here in this short gospel passage. First, we are in labor. Jesus uses the example, and Paul uses it too. When he writes to the Romans, he talks about all creation being in agony, being in labor pains. And Jesus speaks of us individually as being in anguish, as one in labor. In other words, the pain that we have in life, and it comes from so many different sources, it may come from persecution. It may simply come from the limitations of this world and losses that we may experience. This pain is not only temporary, but something is coming out of it. 
Peter talks about how our faith is refined like gold, tried as precious metals are tried and made perfect. Jesus says something is coming forth here. God is bringing us through this life to make us like himself, to perfect our faith, to fill us with his life, to free us from the dominion of sin and death. It's not some kind of magic process. It does not a blink of the eye or a wave of a magic wand. It's a real process of growth and purification. This is what Jesus is helping us understand. Don't be disturbed. Don't lose your peace, even your joy. Notice he says, no one can take your joy away from you when that joy is given to you by the Lord. And then he says, on that day, when we see him face to face, you will not have any more questions to ask me. Life is full of questions. When we look at our faith, by the way, to affirm our faith and to say we believe without any doubt does not mean we don't have questions. Questions are not doubts. Lord, help me to understand better. How is it that you are one God in three persons? Help me to understand more deeply these mysteries of faith. We have lots of questions for him. On that day, he will answer all of them because we will see God as he is. You will have no more questions to ask me. Questions are okay. They don't have to make us lose our peace of mind. But there's still questions, and the mind is looking for the fuller truth. He will give it to us, and it will not be a contradiction of what we already know. What we already know in the faith will never be contradicted. It is eternally true. We will just be enriching it with even more understanding, and our questions will be answered. Bring us, Jesus, to that day. As we continue to celebrate your resurrection, continue to fill us with the joy no one can take from us. And as we endure the labor pains of the new humanity and of our lives as saints, may we trust you, never try to run away from that struggle and pain, but rather joyfully follow the path of your salvation. Amen.